Hey, it's Larry Lercy. Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about the frame tool in Photoshop. It has some handy features, especially if you're trying to put together templates or things that you're going to do over and over again. And I'm going to show you how that works. If you haven't done so already, please take a second to subscribe. It really does help the channel. And click the little bell so you'll know when new content comes out. So if you're ready to learn about the frame tool, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. We're going to take a look at the frame tool. You can find the frame tool over on your toolbar. It looks like this. It's a rectangle with an X through it. You can also hit K to bring up this tool. And basically what's going to happen is you're going to draw, it's kind of very simple in one way. You've got up here two options. You've got a rectangle or a circle. Now you can do other shapes and we'll touch on that a little bit after this but I'm gonna basically show you what the frame tool does and then I'll give you an example of how you might use it uh, in everyday workflow so first we decide if we want a square or a circle and in this case we'll just go with a square and then I draw a square it doesn't matter what size and this is the frame it's created a frame if we look over here on our layers palette we can see that uh, it's set it up right here with a mask next to it. There's our frame. So then it's just a matter of dragging an image into that. So say we'll take this one, drag it in, and it's going to tell you basically that it's going to create a smart object. So what's happened here, this big square you see is the actual image inside the frame. The frame is this smaller rectangle. So we can control either the image here or we can control the frame. If you've used um, like Keynote before for doing slideshows, it's kind of the same way you put images in there where you can either resize the image or resize the frame. And you basically double click inside here to change it. See right now we're working with the frame itself. So we can um, move it around, we can grab the corners and make it bigger. We can make it into a vertical, whatever we want to do like this. Until we get the frame how we want it and where we want it, then we double click inside and we're now controlling the image inside. Again, we can Command T, we can make it larger, smaller, whatever we want. Now, I mentioned before that this image in here is a smart object. And if you're not familiar with smart objects, basically here's the cool thing about a smart object is I could take this image down super small like this hit return and here's my little image here normally if you had just done this in Photoshop and then you command T you try to bring it back up again it's gonna be super pixelated because it's basically stretching that little teeny image that you created but a smart image basically keeps all the original information in it so even if we've made it this big in our file the full size file is actually still there and we can come back to it without losing any resolution. So that's pretty cool. So that's a big advantage is it's giving us these smart objects inside the frame. Click out of it there and um, there we go. Now you can do the move tool here and, and move this around on your composition however you want. Same thing applies. Let's do one more with a uh, hit the circle. Now it's going to trick you a little bit because it's going to look like you go, oh, it's just a rectangle, I wanted the circle. They all start out like this in the rectangle. But when you let go, it's going to show you here's your actual circle. And again, you can make it into an actual circle or more of a um, long, oblong shape like that. Um, let's go with a circle like that. And then basically th that's our frame. We take another image, drag it in our warning message and there you go we can move this around however we'd like pretty simple all right now I'm going to show you another way of doing it I'm just going to delete these two this one works with text so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select the text tool or hit T and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to type China switch to the uh, move tool here, V. Get it where we want it here in the center. I'm going to do Command T and make this a little bit bigger. 
like that. Now what we have here is not a frame, this is just a text layer. And you can tell that looking over here, it's still a text layer. Um, the nice thing about it still being a text layer is I can go back into it and change things. However, I cannot use it as a frame and we want to use it as a frame. So what I'm going to have to do is come over here on this layer and I'm going to right click or control click and we're going to do convert to frame. It's going to ask us to name it. We'll just leave it China. Now it's created a frame. We can tell by the familiar X through it. Keep in mind now it's no longer a text layer so I can't come back in here and change these words. I'm stuck with the China. But basically it's not really looking at those letters China anymore. Now it's looking at the shape of them and using them as a frame. So I will come over here to my library, grab an image, drag it in, get my normal warning. There you go. It is only showing through, much like a clipping mask would do, only showing through where those letters were. And again, I can Command T, I can make this bigger back here. What are we like? Hit return. There I go, there is the words we can't see C because it's too bright. But maybe we decide that's not the right image, grab a different one, drag it in, just automatically replaces it. Like that, that works much better. Again, if I want to work on the image inside there, you can tell by this big box up here that I'm working with the image inside. Command T. I can stretch it out a little bit, move it around. Maybe something like that, hit return. If I want to change the frame itself, I want to make sure that that black box is there. And then I can, same thing, move it around, make it bigger, change the shape, however I want to do it. And that's using transform. I can also just do it by double clicking in here and changing it that way. So you can change up the shape however you want using letters like this or using shapes like squares, circles, things like that. So how would you actually use this in a real life situation? Let me give you an example. Okay, so let's say you run a real estate company. These are what your business cards look like and you've got a bunch of people that come and work for you and you like to have their picture up here. Well, I can set up a frame here and then anytime we hire a new person, I just go in here, change the name and then drag in the person. Heck, let's use this guy again. Double click inside there. Now we can um, size it up. Okay, Command T. Bring this up till it's just a headshot, like that. And there we go. Got the headshot right there. We make the business cards. Next person comes along, drop in their picture, just like that. Change their name. There you go. So it really is an easy way to have a template set up for something like this, whether it's business cards, maybe it's a, a photo series, whatever type of thing that you replicate where there's an image or multiple images. You can set up one of these frames as a placeholder and just move images in and out. And again, you're keeping them as smart objects, which is nice. And it gives you the convenience of being able to swap those images out quickly and update a document like this really cleanly. So that's the frame tool in Photoshop. What do you think? Is that something you can use for your projects? If so, leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of uses you see for the frame tool. Maybe you'll even give other viewers ideas of how to use the tool. I'd love to hear what you come up with. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. I hope to see you again soon for more videos. Take care. Bye-bye.